Well, the salutes have been made. The contribution from South Africa on the field was sublime in that last match. But now we are on to the championship fifth, sixth place game. Very talented Argentinian side, led by the senior veteran Gaston Rabol. First Rabol, first appeared in Rugby World Cup in Moscow. And for France, one change for them, Mignot comes into the side for Uyal. And the South Africans still soaking up this moment. This is what it means to wear the jersey and to be in this environment. Well, Chris Dry, the nature of a sevens tournament. We're next off to the next kickoff right away, despite all that's going on in the stadium. Always something going on in sevens. France in their traditional blue, kick it high and long to Las Pumas sevens in their traditional hooped baby blue and white jerseys. Gonzalez takes that first pick. Which this is for fifth, sixth place. Tackle. Good strength by both teams. <laughs> Capilla, the, the young one. Tackle. Penalty against France. Oh, the kick ahead. Interesting tactic from Hamann Schultz. Goes out of bounds. Well, there's a hush in the stadium after. A stunning previous match. Both these teams, though, a lot to play for. It was the Argentinians that beat South Africa in the last match, 26 points to 19. And France beat Samoa 24-17. The French went down early in that, but were really outstanding attack in the second half. Tries by Barak twice. Logiel and Grandidier won it at the death. This is a very evenly matched affair. High tackle. High tackle against France. High tackle. Argentina, you know, they took their quick tip. They'll slow it down now. A couple of bodies on the ground. Revol directing traffic. Very much a leader this program, not only on the field, but off. This young team that play in high pressure environments all the time. He's constantly there as a resource for them. 35 years old. He's seen and done a lot. Oh, good footwork from Joaquin de la Vega. Six foot three, but very fast on his feet. Six lever on side, yes. Revol loses his footing. Advantage being played. Running across the face of the defense. That one's knocked on. This could be trouble for JP Barak. I think he knows it. He was outstanding. In the previous victory over Samoa, but he's going to spend two minutes in the sin bin. Oh, JP Barak, just getting a hand in there. Five minutes from the line. Seven Argentinians trying to break down six Frenchmen. Number three. And penalized right. again. Offside. Referee's going to give him the mark. That's referee Mornay Ferreira, the South African. Revolt doesn't really want to take the hit. That's Joaquin De La Vega do the damage in the corner. Try Argentina. Uh, it's just that six versus seven. You know, you're always going to struggle on defense, especially five meters from your line and the quick tap. Argentina deciding not to take it slow now because they know the numbers game so critical. Puts it down and gets five points for his team. You're not going to stop the 24 year old from that distance too often. Luciano Gonzalez can't quite add the extras, but the early lead to Argentina halfway through this first half. Little Vega been very busy. That's his third try, but nine carries. Big force. The Argentinian attack. Bit of a wayward kick there. Nice opportunity for Pierre Mignot to get his hands on it. In France, just to run down this clock, 37 seconds left in Barak's sin binning. 
They're still attacking. There is Mignot again. Good feet from Nelson Epe. He's had an incredible season. The first half of it in particular. Look at the calm and cool of Verandamo. So comfortable in the 7th pitch. 15th pitch, doesn't really matter where. Finally a knock on by France. That'll bring Barak back in out of the sin bin. Almost went into slow-mo over there. He actually said, let's, let's <laughs> me and you have a little battle. Took the battle, I had the offload. I don't think anyone was expecting it. Both teams to seven now. Crouch. Lots of rugby still to come here. Fine. As this stadium just takes its breath. Set. Argentina up in this one. Fighting for fifth, sixth place in the world. Argentina, of course, right up into the last day in that Los Angeles Sevens two weeks ago, in with a chance to win the HSBC World Series title. So maybe in some ways a bit of a disappointment for them to not be closer to lifting the gold medal here in the Melrose Cup. Barack keeps it alive. Oh, great work from him. And that's going to get return. Fantastic interplay. And Nelson Epe gets France on the board. Oh, that was lightning. And you have to, you have to look at that last pass. Oh. Marginally, margin. That's well. That's just a game of sevens. You saying this is forward? Yeah, it could be tight. <laughs> <laughs> it depends what angle you look at it. You know, if you're on the French side, it's definitely not as flat as can be. Yeah, always a contestable one, difficult one to get right for the referee. Don't let the truth get in the way of a good try, mate. <laughs> and the conversions actually give France the lead. Time off, a couple of subs on the field. They're pretty even so far. One try apiece. Are you ready? Ready? Time back on. Time's going to come back on. You'll see our two o'clock start ticking away. Oof. Great kick, great take. Rodrigo Iscro. Powering through. Oh, he's hurt himself there by the looks of it. Again, spill ball. Knock on. You know, kickoffs is, is, is one of the, the big aspects of the sevens game, you know, and, and to launch yourself up to the unknown, catch a ball with two hands, that's full commitment from this Argentinian team. You know, they get up, they know that battle's coming, get the ball in front so there's no contest from the side. That's something you have to train on a weekly basis. Grouch. So the first half winds down. Next stoppage will do Set. it unless it's a penalty. Revol. <coughs> Gonna have a reset scrum here. Refimone Ferreira. The African Spanish French conversation going on there. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in that one. <laughs> Fine. Sloppy scrum Six. format from France here, but strange scrum. Here we go. Balls away. All right, all right. Some holding off the ball. You can hear the appeals to the referee. He was having none of it. This is better. Again, we're in injury time. Oh, it's been knocked on. So that will do it to end the first half here in the championship fifth, sixth place playoff here, 2022 Rugby World Cup of Sevens. Right now, it's France just leading Argentina by seven points to five.
Barre, very deliberate in his message there. And the facto coach, Gaston Rival, helping out Santiago Gomez Cora. A little final message there, a little bit of stick up. Great sights here in Cape Town. Cape Town Stadium lit up here. Almost. They're waiting for the TV. That is Cape Town Stadium, the host for Rugby World Cup Sevens 2022 here. Lots to come, the women's and men's finals. Will New Zealand repeat in both of those, or will Australia and Fiji grapple the cups? from the teams in black. The kickoff is short, but played by France. France in the darker blue jerseys lead this match, seven points to five. Two bronze medal games still to come as well, the men's and women's. Well picked up by Usadjuk. He's been quiet in this match so far, and just a little spill there. He wants to go back, thought there might have been advantage. Yeah, double knock, and it just feels like it's such a good contest. You know, it's 5 7. It's one of those games, you know, it's, the next moment's going to be so critical to get points on the board. France now also making some changes, trying to get some fresh legs on the park. Yeah, perhaps understandable the team's making some changes. The third day of action here, <laughs> Revol, 35 years old, just going to have a little breather. Time Fine. back on. French put in again. They're putting in against the head. They want to go with the green. They've won the free kick, so off they go through Perez. A wild pass out of the spin around. Doesn't go to hand. One handed pickup from Luciano Gonzalez. Perez competes. Thought he had it, but we're going to go back to the original knockoff. Somehow it just feels like everyone's playing hot potato at the moment, you know, no one's sticking to the ball, no one's just running a hard line. Let's just get get past that advantage line so we can get clean, cleaners in, you know, get them stuck at the rack and get the ball wide. At the moment, you know, there's no real form of direction. I'd like to see the teams get it out wide, have a big run, you know, and then take it from there. Yeah, the French obviously dominating the air department. But as we said, an Argentinian side that's played so much great sevens rugby this year. You know, mentally very demanding on this young group. With a few senior heads sprinkled in there. It's been a long, long season. Great Fine. moment for them at the Canada Sevens in Vancouver. Lifting gold Six. there. Emotion for everyone to see how important that was for them. Short ball. Santiago Verifeld is engulfed by the French. The ball in one hand. Steaming around the corner goes Rodrigo Isco. He's brought down 10 meters short. Puma sevens in attack. Coming back against it is Tobias Wade. It's a messy ruck. Referee's going to come all the way back to the original ruck. Offside. Quick tap. Loses his footing momentarily. Does Austin Fraga. He releases the ball, though. Meter to go. He reaches out. Outstanding work from Luciano Gonzalez. Got two against South Africa, gets one against France. See, he got hurt in, the, in that final score. The one-handed run, not many guys can do this. It is a dangerous tactic, especially at night when it gets a little bit wet, but he's stuck on. And this is crucial, you know, breakdown is very important in the game of sevens. I think he used every part of that stretch to get that ball down. Injured himself in the process. That can happen when you reach out. Tobias Wade can't quite add the extras, but Argentina have the lead. At three points. Still feeling the soreness there. 
should say Marcos Moneta not featuring a great deal here has had some gastrointestinal issues so he hasn't been available in full flight but this man is in full flight Paulino Riva <laughs> the pass doesn't go to hand frustration oh that would have just been you know for him a walk through oh he gives a little spit on the hand says come on Eight and seven. You know, just a good line break. Again, that aerial battle. France getting up, getting the ball to their side, spotting the space in the blind. Goes straight through the middle. The handoff. Oh. Maybe left it just to the side. It's been a long weekend. These players have worked hard. They've entertained us, the men and the women here in Cape Town. Been a privilege to be a part of it. Gareth Reese here with Chris Dry, and we have the medal games to come. This is on the men's side, the fifth, sixth place match. Both men's and women's bronze medals coming up next. Argentina looking to add to their three point tally. Just under three minutes to go. The rock was formed, said our referee. Argentina just taking it slow. They know two minutes still in the game. They back probably their line out. Who's a man you played against a few times, Chris? Santiago Gomez Cora. <laughs> and uh, he coached against you many, many times. You know, so much passion and so much experience and also you know, he's really grown this Argentinian team to be such a threat on the World Series, you know. They've, they've pulled off a win, and uh, they're very competitive, and, you know, this is a team that's only going to get better, and excited to see what happens in the next few years. Ever the professional, he looked up at the big screen and saw his face up there, but didn't flinch. <laughs> it's all about business right now. Argentina, three points to the good in the business of this match. Lineout's not straight. France have the choice. And they're going to take the scrum. Yeah, the lineouts have been so contested lately. You know, a lot of teams previously would say, Let, let's just have a crack at the lineout. But, uh, you know, scrum seems to be a safer bet. I think your your position stays on your side more often than in the lineout. Well, the duel continues. Jerome Dore also put on the big screen and also didn't crack when he saw himself. His team inside their own 22, looking to break out and regain the lead. 50-50 ball. And Grandidi is on the field. He got the winner in their previous match. France pushing it through the hands. Big fan there from Uyal off the bench. France down to 35 seconds. They need a try. The Rock circling, creating, Perez linking. That's knocked down. That could be trouble, but advantage. Good refereeing. Realizing the opportunity still available for France. He may come back and produce a yellow card. Yeah, time's off. Yeah, France, all they're doing is just grinding down this defense, making them work, making them get up off the park, and you can just see exhausted bodies. And now down to six. That's a big one. Well, they asked for Tobias Wade, number 10. He said, it wasn't me. And so in the end, it's Augustine Fraga who will sit for two minutes. The classic words of any any player when, when the ref says, calls him to the naughty corner. Wasn't me. So with only six men on the field, three in the scrum, the scrum half has to be there. That leaves one side of this pitch unmarked for a French player to attack. Grandidi, as I said, got the winner in the previous match. That victory over Samoa at the death. He is to the bottom of your screen in the nine jersey. Let's see where the ball ends up. Set. Things ground, they go with the flow. Two on one, Perez flips it out wide. Fittingly, JP Barak gets the win. Oh, 
up, does he get it down? I got ahead of myself. J.P. Barak did not get the ball down, and he knows it. The ref knows it. And that's going to do it here. Frustration for the French. A victory for the Argentinians. And yeah, Darea said something I'd rather not translate for you. They did everything right, right until the end. So great effort from both sides as we've seen all weekend here in Cape Town. Argentina win it 10 points to 7 over France. They claim fifth place.